Tatiana, you have an exceptional exhibition at Saint Pompidou. I'm really amazed. It's beautiful. It's very oniric, as we say in French. And could you tell me what you wanted to do when, when they told you we are going to do a show at Saint Pompidou? There was this space linked to the, the outside of the building, to the, to, the, to the neighborhood. And so what did you decide to do? Because it's very mysterious. Well, I decided to do, first of all, I really to decide to use this uh, architecture as a really open space because most of the time um, it's like um, a cube in, it's really like a box in glass, but most of the time the, the, the window are closed to the, uh, to the outside. Yes, because also for the museum um, rules you are not allowed to let the daylight in especially when you are showing work on papers and this was my case uh, so i decided to to try to find a way to use the daily light to use through this big cottons through this big installation cottons then i have a make and uh, to have a link with the outside so to try to have the the view from the landscape of outside much more like one of my drawings. And I am also install of my drawings without walls. So floating in the space on different level, different areas. So you can walk under the drawings, behind the drawings. So every drawings, they are also um, anchoring from the both sides on the space. And my idea was really to try to have another way to, to look the work much more with kind of idea of disorientation to create a new point of view, new perspective, and to also see the, the drawings as a, an overlapping uh, dimensions. Yes, but here, in fact, you have created an entire world, right? The floor, the, the, in fact, the huge drawings um, create a space too, mm -hmm. and a very mysterious space. And they look like sculptures, the way they are hanged. So what, what did you want to express? Well, my idea was really to try to get inside the space, then it's inside the space of one of my drawings, and to be and to bring the visitor in a kind of universe where it's kind of floating space in a way, where you can have a pluri-universe, not only one, but many dimensions. Also on the floor, there is many diagram who belong uh, to a different way to, to move and to live in the world from different, uh, different species. This goes with the, the dream chart from the Aborge uh, Aboriginal to the, um, to the neutrino um, movement, to the, um, the wolf map uh, with an, an olfatic map. So it's also many way to to move in the world and to feel the world also. So, but, uh, but can really people understand what's on the floor? Well, there is a small description <laughs> on the show. Uh, there is a small text, um, but the idea was also the way you walk, you see kind of paths on the, on the floor. Um, it's not really necessary to understand exactly the meaning of each drawings but much more to have the perception of what could be and if you really want to know there is a way a text to explain where from there they come from but i have also overlapping all these diagrams and they are also creating a new kind of map new drawings on the floor and what about the drawing hanging in the space what do they speak about what do you want to express what I want to express. So these drawings are made in, with, it's, I always use this kind of colorate paper, then I kind of melt with the bleach. So with the bleach, I, I, I cancel some of the colors of this paper and all this mark who appear is the starting point for, for me to do the drawings, a little bit like you are reading on the, on the coffee uh, you know, when you are drinking the coffee, I don't know what it's called, but um, uh, so this is really the start point for me. And then I really, I'm really playing and floating in between this dimension where uh, my spirit go and the concentration go with, I am inside to this uh, uh, 
uh, reading this, um, this marking and start to build the kind of world we are coming out from these marks. So the, the space that you give to dream is huge, right? Yeah, it's huge. And I try also to play with different visions because in every drawings, there is also kind of a, a passage between a vision who is in positive and in negative on the same drawings. Sometimes there is also the vision that you have when you are looking something under the sunlight and then you close your eyes and then you have all these kind of very bright colors or mark who stay in your in your brain or behind your eyes. So it's playing, all my drawing is playing also with different way, different perception of the images. But in fact, is it dr dreams or is it just a way to think or to escape from reality? I think, you know, it's both. What was, for example, if we talk about the Arbor Aboriginal culture, what is really nice is for them, there is not, um, a barrier between the, the, the dreaming world and the reality world. Uh, for us, it's something that's relating to the unconscious and in something sometimes you can give an interpretation and uh, there is a, um, a reading a border, clear, very clear border between the, the dreams and the reality. Uh, but for them not, the dream, it's really part of reality. It's really part of the way they approach the world. And in my drawings, I think I have a little bit the same relation. What interests me is not really if it is dreams, what we see, or it's, it is a way to escape the reality. It's uh, all this dimension, they are overlapping and try to build up a world where all these kind of point of view, they coexist on the same time. But it's a fantastic dimension. I try to, to imagine when you begin a drawing, how it works. It, it's raised like that or from your hand or from, from where? When I start to draw? Uh, well, there is something, the way I draw, it's very long because it's really, you see, it's a small scratch. It's going to do in one way and then in the other one. So it's very long, long, long way to, to draw my drawings because they are very kind of miniature the way I, I do the edges on, on my drawings. And this allowed me to go to navigate a little bit. It's not a trance, but it's a way, you know, when you are meditating a little bit, I have the same feeling with my drawings. And I have always an idea of, in a small parcel, in a small piece of the drawings, I have an idea what I'm gonna do, but not at all for the rest. It's really when I'm working and then everything is start to appear to me and start to make a sense. But sometimes I spend also a lot of time to erase. So sometimes I go in the paths where it's totally wrong and then I have to go come back. But also this time then I erase the drawings is also part of the work. I like, sometimes I really get lost also and not in the good way, but I really accept because it's part of this, this work. And when do you know that it's finished? You always know. <laughs> I always know. I don't know how. On the drawings, for me, it's more clear when I'm finished. For the sculpture, no, because after years, sometimes I rework the sculptures. I, I go back and so on. But with the drawings, I you always know. And um, this is really new, no? A really new vocabulary to, that you are showing at, uh, at Pompidou. Well, the drawings, they go from 2007 until today. Uh, the new one, maybe the new, the really new vocabulary are the scale, because this was the first time that I used really big scale of my drawings. Um, this is the first time that I do drawings that it's two, two meters, 64 by four meters. This was really the first time and it changed a lot for me, the relation that I have to them because it's much more physical. It's also much more relating maybe to my installation because um, I, I can get lost more easy inside my drawings on this scale. Oh, that's interesting. And so uh, what is your next dream now? My next what? Dream. <laughs> You know dreams? 
<laughs> yeah, sure. My next dreams it's um, to move outside Paris to cut to catch a new studio on the countryside. <laughs> ah. I need a new studio. This is my next dream. Bon, let's see. <laughs> Merci, Tatiana. De rien.